Welcome to the Fantasy Source Football Podcast. My name is David A. R. Not sitting here with Bill Bender. We're going to be running Fantasy Football Podcasts on Tuesdays on Fantasy Source on SportingNews.com. Baseball Podcasts will continue on Thursdays, usually posted in the afternoons. Uh, Bill, you're a huge Green Bay Packers fan. We're starting with the NFC North today. Uh, from a fantasy perspective. So, uh, since you're a Packers fan, let's start with the Packers. Uh, what do you think their outlook is? Are they are they going to repeat as the class of the NFC? Uh, is Aaron Rodgers for real? I mean, I think you, I think we all pretty much agree for agree on that. But uh, give us give us your general impressions of them. Well, last year the Super Bowl run was incredible, and you know, like you said, being a Packers fan all my life, I think it was the most enjoyable run from the standpoint that they weren't the best team until toward the end of the season, but the run through the playoffs, beating Michael Vick, beating the Falcons, beating the rival Bears, and then capping it off against basically their mirror image in the Steelers, it was a fantastic run, and it, it really brought the rest of the world, what fantasy owners have already known, is that Aaron Rodgers is a stud. He's a great quarterback, and he's probably the safe pick even over Michael Vick. I mean, Michael Vick will be the first quarterback taken in most drafts, but there's no no problem in taking Aaron Rodgers there. He is the safe pick. He's the total stud. He does it all. I mean, in fantasy circles, the dirty little secret, I mean, not dirty little secret, but the little secret about Aaron Rodgers is that he runs a lot. I mean, and he gets a lot of rushing yards for a quarterback. And you know what? If you get 500 rushing yards per year, whatever it is that he gets, and it's 400 more than the average quarterback out there, those are fantasy points just waiting to be picked up. And you know what? If you look just at the raw passing stats while he's up there, elite among the elite of the elite, add in those rushing stats and the, and the willingness to go for it at the goal line, that's what makes him special from a fantasy perspective. Oh, absolutely. And uh, he may run a little less this year because he did suffer two concussions last season, and the Packers put themselves in a hole when he had those concussions, losing both games. But uh, they, they're going to have so much around him this year. They are healthy. They, were, they had 21 players on injured reserve last season. They get Ryan Grant back. They get Jermichael Finley back, which ought to excite fantasy owners right away. The guy had two 100-yard games in four weeks last year. He's as good as Antonio Gates talent-wise. It's just staying on the field and, uh, you know, realizing some of that potential with him. And, and just adding Randall Cobb in the draft. The offense is loaded. They're going to score a ton of points. They, they've scored 25.1 points per game since McCarthy was coach. And I look for them to make another run. This could be one of their best teams. Maybe like the Favre Super Bowl team that went back-to-back. -back. This could be like that second-year team. That's really high praise for Finley if you're putting him in the same sentence as as Antonio Gates. Uh, but as far as those wide receivers, uh, two questions about, uh, first about the wide receivers and then the running bats. Do you think they have too many wide receivers where, you know, on if they were a normal team where they had the two guys up on top and then everyone else just kind of fought for the scraps, that they would be more valuable from a fantasy perspective? And then second, who do you think is going to emerge among the running backs? Well, Jennings is the guy out of the receivers. He's the deep threat. He's kind of the guy that the rest of the receivers play off of. With Finley back, he'll be solid. And, and I stand by those comments. I think he's an outstanding tight end, and he just needs to stay healthy. I, reports of Donald Driver being done are a little overblown. I still think he'll have a role in that offense. If James Jones leaves, you're going to see Jordy Nelson become a fantasy stud, I think, maybe a every week wide receiver three. As for the running backs, that's the training camp battle to watch. Is Ryan Grant healthy, number one, and can James Starks build off that postseason run that he had? If so, there's going to be a timeshare. It's going to frustrate owners. I'd rather see one guy stand out, but I just don't see that happening because both guys are about even. Almost by default, the second best team by consensus in the NFC North is the Chicago Bears. They made it into the playoffs with the with. Uh, I guess it's almost an improbable run. I mean, it, it's it's kind of surprising given the quarterback issues that they had and the inability to block pass rushers that they did make it as far as they did uh, and did as well as they did in the regular season. Do you see them repeating uh, their success, their improbable success under Mike Martz's offensive coordinator, or do you maybe see them regressing? As I tend to, th I tend to be seeing a lot of people uh, saying because they're thinking, you know what, people are going to figure it out. Well, a lot of people like Detroit to finish second in the division, but I don't think you can write off the Bears. Jay Cutler. His totals went down with Mike Martz, which surprised a lot of owners. And I think as a result, he's going to become 
maybe a decent value pick as a backup quarterback because that Mike Martz offense is still going to throw too much. It's still going to throw when it's supposed to run. <laughs> and they're never going to allow. He's never going to allow his quarterbacks to audible to anything. Right. And, and but sometimes less is more. I mean, Matt Forte less carries last year, better overall results. And I think he's a nice bargain pick as a second running back because of the PPR factor. He had 51 catches last season. So the Bears and with that defense, Urlacher, Peppers, they have difference makers. You know, and, and that's hard for me to praise a team like the Bears being a Packers fan, but I still think they've got enough to finish second and, he, and perhaps, perhaps give Green Bay a run. So you're saying that Cutler is a value pick, Forte is a value pick. Do you have any even like low level sleepers, guys that you might, that maybe everyone knows their names, but they're going to perform better than you think that they're going to perform, not just the Forte and Cutler guys? Well, Johnny Knox is a guy that I think is going to have another solid season. He was one of six receivers with 18-plus yards per catch and 40-plus catches last season. That sounds a little confusing, but basically what we're saying is he's a consistent deep threat. And uh, the Bears may go out in free agency and grab another receiver, but we've heard that for the last two years. Let's move on to the Minnesota Vikings, who seem to have been, I, I don't know, I guess you could call it flux ever since Brett Favre came over. And now that he's departed, it's still a mess over there. They don't really seem to have much of an identity anymore. Uh, and with Jared Allen kind of falling off the map last year, their defense lost a bit of it, its, its identity. What do you see for them moving forward? Well, what they got to do is simple. they got to give the ball to Adrian Peterson. He didn't get 300 carries last year for the first time in his career. He was injured. But I think Leslie Frazier has to get him the ball and has to give him the ball a lot, no matter who they bring in in quarterback. And I'm going to throw one at you with the quarterback questions. I know they drafted Christian Ponder, but you know a lot of the rumors out there saying they're going to bring Donovan McNabb in. Well, McNabb, 19 touchdowns and five interceptions indoors, 96.3 career quarterback, quarterback rating indoors. Sounds a lot, little like a guy they brought in two years ago, a veteran <laughs> guy. Just saying, if they bring in McNabb and some of those receivers stay, there could be a little bit of a turnaround. But I still don't see them you know, maybe competing for a division title. With Peterson getting less usage last year, is he still a top, top, top pick in, in overall fantasy drafts for you? I think he's a working man's, like, first-round pick, maybe number three spot. He'll probably fall behind Arian Foster, and I'd probably take Chris Johnson over him. Just is it because... crazy to, to take him number one? It's not. Just because he's consistent. You know what you get with Adrian P Peterson, and, and, and some owners might want to see Arian Foster do it again. Adrian Peterson, his talent isn't going anywhere. He's still a freak of nature. He's still fast, and he can still break off a long run at any time. And I look for him to maybe be a nice little pickup for whoever has number three. If you're lucky, he falls at you at number four or number five. Uh, now, the thing about the Vikings versus the Lions, I think that pretty much everybody out there would, uh, when pressed, would say that the Vikings and the Lions, they're probably about the same level talent, total talent-wise. But a lot more people are going to like the Lions because they're new, they're shiny. I mean, they're not boring in the same way that the Vikings are. They've got Megatron. They've got Matt Stafford, who, a dirty little secret, second time I've said that today, he, didn't, he doesn't stay on the field, even though however much talent he may have, he can't stay on the field. That, I mean, he's not going to help his team that way. Well, the Lions are a chic pick, and... I I, I'm kind of torn here. I really like Nadama and Sue and what he's brought to that defense. Their defense is actually a legit fantasy defense now. And Sue, I've said it time and time again in the newsroom, he just reminds me of Reggie White, a freakish talent, a little bit nasty, maybe a little bit nastier than Reggie White, but maybe not Blast as talented. Blast you know what I mean? I'm talking about personality-wise. Oh, yeah, like Reggie, right, White, yeah, Reggie White, a nice guy on and off. You know, Sue just he brings an element of nastiness that they need, but they still need help in the back seven on that defense. And then offensively, Calvin Johnson's just one of my favorite players in the league. I love the guy. He he makes big plays. He had a great year last year, and it doesn't matter who's throwing him the football. He's still worth taking in the second round. What do you think about the running back situation there? Javid Best, Michael Lashore, am I pronouncing that correctly? I think it is. I mean, those two guys, they've both they're both intriguing to fantasy owners. Uh, Best especially because of that big playability, I think. Well, Best is going to fit in, in, especially in PPR leagues, because the Lions are going to throw a lot with Scott Lanahan running, you know, the call in the plays. And 
Best is going to catch a lot of passes. I just don't know if he's going to score a lot of touchdowns. I think LaShore could be the guy that they give the ball to inside the red zone. And he had 6.1 yards per carry in, in the Big Ten last year. Now, that might not carry weight in the SEC, but it's still tough to do. And I think he's going to steal more carries, and that's going to create week-to-week -week problems for owners trying to pick the right back. So we talked about Johnny Knox earlier. We talked about Jay Cutler earlier being value picks. Looking back at the rest of the division, who else do you see as being guys that might be might be good sleepers that not anywhere, that other people aren't really quite aware how good they were? Well, I'll give you one from each team, and I'll stick with Cutler with the Bears just because I think he's a nice fantasy backup. Brandon Pettigrew with the Lions, a tight end that had 71 catches last season, and they, like I said, they're going to throw it around. If he catches a few more touchdowns, he's right in that top ten tight ends. Toby Gerhardt, just in case Adrian Peterson gets hurt. Yeah. So, so you're saying that even if you don't draft Adrian Peterson, try get him before his owner handcuffs him? Oh, sure. Yeah, I think you know that's a guy that I think he can step in, and he proved last he showed some flashes last year, and he could probably carry a nice workload. And then the Packers, I'm going to go Jordy Nelson. I mentioned him earlier. I just think in that offense, with Driver slightly declining, James Jones maybe leaving free agency, then I think Jordy Nelson's the next Wes Welker. So he's going to be playing in the slot a lot, you think? Well, I think he's just going to catch a lot of passes, okay. no matter where they line him up. And he's got a little bit of speed. He, show, he certainly showed it in the Super Bowl, which uh, I'll remind everybody out there one more time, the Packers won last season. <laughs> yes, the championship belt is in Green Bay at the moment. So, Bill, that's the NFC North. Yeah, and just one more thing, just you know, come on to Fantasy Source, and we've got all the previews up on the website that you can read and get more. And we have the AFC North this week, which we'll be talking about next week. All right, thanks for joining us. Thank you.